So the pie, we included the test for completeness because it's an example we used in more introductory courses in the past. So essentially it's a very simple loop which has a scalar reduction. So if you run directly the PW report dash dash checks, it identifies an offloading opportunity. What's here the include tags instead of all here we are using GPU. So we are working in the direction we mentioned before, trying to provide different ways to triage or select the checkers that are relevant for your particular performance optimization problem. So in particular here, we are using the GPU alias to filter out what is not relevant. And then we see the two commands suggested by Cody. There is a question in the Q&A, Google Doc about why Cody is recommending OpenMP of load versus OpenMP, OpenACC. Well, the intention is not to recommend it. This is something we need to definitely fix. What is happening here is that whenever Cody has different, several auto fix options for a given checker or a given rule, then it tries to make makes the best to try to select one that is probably the best and tries to write that in the first place of the list of the auto fixes. So this is what is happening essentially. This doesn't mean that this code is recommending for some reason OpenMP for Perlmutter at this stage, okay? So this is something someone pointed out in the Q&A. So next, as usual, invoke the command, see the report, see the here different options that could support for rewriting the PI example or in general, any scalar reduction operation from the reduction clause, even with atomic construct protection, or even explicit privatization that is implementing the semantics of the reduction clause, but without the clause, just by using privatizing the variables explicitly and making the corresponding workload split and final reduction and synchronization. So this is something you can somehow explore if you're interested. But here by default, Code is selecting the reduction clause because for scalar reductions, it's usually the best option because it's usually supported by all the compilers and it's a pro producing efficient code. The same stands for OpenACC. Um, and finally, you can see the benchmarking here with two, three X speed up obtained in this particular case. So again, very simple. You have the script. So uh, Let's move on to the Lulish MK example. So Lulish MK. Not sure if we are recording, Helen. Um, recording. I just um, skip the demo of Pi, but. And the slides is, is good to show hey, that you have shown. Okay, so I understand it is recorded. Okay, so um, Lulis MK. Okay, this is a pretty interesting example. We created this in one of the first trainings at NERSC because at that time we were working with some of the DOE benchmarks, in particular Lulis, and we found it would be very interesting to understand how the experts were uh, optimizing the performance or parallelizing the Lulis example, the Lulis code. But the Lulis was still too big for a training course. It was using C++ and some C++ constructs that were not the focus of Kodi uh, development. So we decided to create a Lulis MK version that is essentially a simplified version of Lulis written in C but that essentially captures all the key uh, features of the code that uh, we need to understand to understand how it was optimized. So Lulesh is a, a physics uh, simulation. So you can expect the typical simulation loop and inside the simulation loop, some kind of discretization and updating in each iteration of the loop different uh, calculating different steps of the solution. And at the end, at the end of the simulation, you have the, the solution to the problem. 
Okay? In particular, this is using a Lagrangian hydrodynamics. We are not experts in the physics or the computational methods behind it. So what we are trying to understand is from the code perspective, how these methods look like and how we can learn to um, optimize them. So the first thing you should do is a profiling. Here is a good example of how you must triage or narrow the execution of Kodi, not to the whole project, but a particular snippet of code. In particular, the function uh, calculm f pull class force workload is one of the targets that you should uh, analyze. Next, one of the things you need to understand about big codes is understand how to validate that the solution is correct. This is trivial in the Pi use case. This is easy in the MATMUL because you can compare element by element and see an approximation of, or a minimum, allow only a minimum difference or error or, or epsilon between these two solutions. But in general, in simulation, in computational methods, it's not always easy. So here we're trying to represent the part of the output uh, that is relevant to understand which are the, the magnitudes that you need to pay attention to, to understand, to validate that the solution, the numerical solution is correct against the sequential execution that is the reference. So this is how the code actually looks like. It's one file with 15 functions, 20 loops, 500 lines of code, and essentially it's invoked in the LULSMK uh, function. And this LULSMK function essentially is invoking, calling the target hotspot function reported by the profiling that inside contains indirect accesses and, and is doing read-write operations on these indirect accesses. Essentially, if you characterize this as a pattern, this is essentially a sparse uh, pattern, okay? a sparse reduction pattern. The complexity of real codes uh, with uh, many source lines of code, the code includes temporary variables that need to be understood by the tool, or even calls to other functions that require some type of interprocedural analysis to understand what's going on and to detect the pattern. Okay, So this is just some of the example, examples of complexity that you find in real codes. So after that, the typical process you will see in the demonstration, dash dash checks, does that check is able to manage that complexity in Kodi? It reports strided accesses or memory inefficiencies. We are using again the GPU tag to filter out what is not relevant to GPU. And here we can see that Kodi is able to report an offloading opportunity. So there is the potential of a tag loop to be offloaded following the requirements of a sparse reduction. So what are those requirements? Essentially, you can see it here. You need to offload the computations. You need to add the data transfers. In this particular case, Kodi is not able to detect all the ranges of the data transfers. Sometimes this is available in the source code. Sometimes this is not. This is some of the these are some of the limitations of static of pure static code analysis. So in those cases, you will need to fill in the ranges as we have seen in the previous simpler examples. So here, essentially, what you need to add is modify the template OpenACC pragma generated by Kodi and replace the brackets with the two columns with the brackets and the essentially the size of the, of the target arrays that are involved in the reduction, sparse reduction. After that, uh, you, could, you can run Kodi again, this is something new in this lab, to check if it can find something else in the openacc enabled code. And here, essentially, it is reporting that Kodi added some pragmas, openacc pragmas, but as the right interprocedural calls, there is a need to provide info to the compiler on how to offload the corresponding functions in the offloaded loop. And this is done in, in OpenACC through the pragma ACC routine with some modifiers, sec, vector, worker, or gang. In this particular case, we use uh, pragma ACC routine sec, okay? Uh, 
we do this manually, this stage, but if you, you can also see, again, different capabilities between different compilers. We have chosen the NVIDIA compiler because the NVIDIA compiler, once you upload the region, it is able to detect that the functions need to be annotated with ACC routine sec. And this is what it is reporting in these messages. So again, in the NVIDIA compiler, it does it automatically. You don't need to add the pragma ACC routine sec. But again, if you want to promote portability and performance portability across environment, different environments, it's always good that you add these explicit pragmas in your code. Finally, you can benchmark uh, Rulesh as it is compiled by default. So in this particular case, you go down from 18 seconds to four seconds for excess speed up. Uh, playing with the environment, this was something that we have, been, have done when porting this example use case from Cori to, to Permuter. We wanted to see what was the difference between using the default flags of the compiler, which is typically the default we use in our uh, build, uh, build systems, or is sometimes it is a requirement of an application not to use the maximum optimization level because this can lead to changes in the numerical result that lead to incorrect results. But in this particular case, we wanted to see what happened if we enable the faster execution level with, in particular, the NVIDIA compiler. So the, the surprising result was that by enabling dash fast and allowing the compiler to do aggressive optimizations that can change the numerical result, in this particular run, for this particular setup of the Lulis MK example, the results are correct. And the sequential reference time goes down from 18 seconds down to less than one second. So very surprising, this huge level of optimization adding dash fast. We did not inspect or dig deeper into, into what's going on inside the NVIDIA compiler, why it's, it is able to do such an aggressive optimization. We just wanted to reflect this in the in this in this step by step guide. To again reflect the importance of producing code that is, if possible, independent of the environment. The environment is the processor or the hardware, is the compiler or even the compiler version, is the compiler or even the compiler flags that we select or we use in our build system, and of course the operating system. Okay, so it's something definitely uh, included here just to let us make us think about it and and reflect about it. Okay, so I will stop sharing and uh, Ulysses will be doing this step by step guide in a live demo. Yes, thank you, Manuel. So we'll follow the same steps that you've seen in the slides, but now live. So in this case, we start with the checks report. W report checks, both. And we go directly to the, uh, so focusing the analysis on the, in this function, calc, or class, force for elements. We do this with the colon and the name of the function that we want uh, to focus the analysis. And in this case, include tax GPU. So we filter the, the checks uh, to show only the GPU related checks. And here we have the um, PWR55, considering apply offloading. So it's suggesting us to apply offloading to the sparse reduction loop. Let me show you first this loop. Uh, oh. 
Um, here it is. This is how the loop looks initially in the um, original version. And now uh, Cori is suggesting us to apply offloading. And we have again the options of uh, rewriting the, this code automatically with open ECC pragmas or with OpenMP for offloading pragmas. And we are going to follow the suggestion to uh, rewrite the code with open ACC pragmas. And um, let's do just that. It direct is offload ACC. And uh, we change the again the dash dash in place with dash O and Lulation K um, underscore ACC. And here we have the, the message of uh, one task that we need to, to complete and is to complete the access range for variables. As we did for Fortune, we have to do the same uh, in this case for C. In the slides, as Manuel showed to you, um, here are what uh, you have to manually write. I will use the version that I already edit myself. So, those. Um, fix. So here is my version that I already applied the manual uh, edit with the with the ranges that were missing from the template generated by Cody. And now <clears throat> we run again the checks report. Um, we see what happens with the recommendation 27. And here it is. So it is uh, suggesting us to annotate the definition of the function um, with pragma ACC routine using sec as Manuel already told you. And I think we are ready just to run it. Yeah. This demo is short, so. Running. We did not apply the PWR 27 manually, but as we are working with NVIDIA compiler, it should work without this modification. So the result should be less than uh, 20 seconds for the original version and four seconds for the optimized version using offloading with OpenACC. So some warnings, but these are expected. And here we have the results. So again, uh, less than 20 seconds for the original version. Uh, error, okay. I thought I was using, perhaps it is loading the, um, the version that is missing the manual modifications of the template. Let me check 
Yes, it is. So we will fix this with. Yeah, it was not using the underscore fixed version. This execution should run uh, okay. So the warnings again, less than 20 seconds. And now we don't have the error. And we have the same warnings expected and Nine seconds for the OpenACC version. The results. Let me check the, um, the script so we understand better the results. So the first result is the original version. The second result is the OpenACC version. The third result is Lulesh with dash fast. So the original, but compiled with fast. And the last result is the OpenACC version compiled with fast. So four results. I think you can focus on the first two executions to see the difference in timing. So yeah, 20 seconds for the original without fast. Three seconds for the OpenACC version without fast. Here we have a less than one second and one second again. So with fast, it is uh, almost no performance improvement. Yeah, as pointed out in the slides, it's a uh, it's surprising such a huge uh, uh, improvement using dash fast uh, for this particular code. So that is just for, as I pointed out, just for us to think about the correct selection of the flags that provides the correct numerical results. Okay. Um, I think I would like to uh, remark something. Can you please um, list the contents of the zip file in the terminal? Uh, yes. There are several questions in the Google Doc related to the array ranges in the data closes. 
Okay. As pointed out, Codi today cannot fill them in. So we're working to improve that and fill them in always, whenever possible, that there is the information in the source code, or even in the future, ask the, the, the user to insert the size of the arrays and Codi generate the code completed with those sizes. So in the meantime, if you can please list uh, the Madmul Fortran example, which was the use case in two or three questions. Inside it, you can see the solutions uh, subfolder. Solutions, yes. Yeah. Uh, exactly. So here, what you have is all the versions that we are using in the benchmarking in the, in the launch script. So it starts from the original code in the root directory of the project, in this case, Matmul Fortran. The loop interchange version, remember, we are automating it. So at this moment, it is applied by hand, but based on it, adding the OpenMP and OpenAC pragmas is done using PW directives. But as there are the missing ranges, then you have the versions ended in dash or underscore fix. If you diff, for instance, make a diff between Matmul Li F90 and Matmul Li ACC F90. It's inside solutions, so probably you need to oh, yeah. go inside the folder. So that's it. Here you can see the difference between the version with the template uh, data scoping uh, or data transfer clauses generated by Kodi with this notation that we know the compiler will typically fail to compile, or in this case, the NVIDIA compiler reports a message indicating that a warning indicating that the number of subscripts is less than the rank of the array in its declaration. So what this means is that A is shaped as a 1D array in what Kodi generates, but in reality, it is a 2D array, so it requires the array ranges in dimension one and dimension two, okay? So this is essentially uh, what is uh, uh, the main issue behind some of the questions in the, in the, in the Google Doc. So remember, all the projects in the zip file come with a subfolder with the solutions. So everything that is automatically generated is automatically generated, but what is manually fixed at, in, with this version, you have the versions inside the zip file. I hope this helps uh, to know exactly what is the key issue that needs to be addressed by the programmer. Any Thanks. questions about this? Okay, so with this, um, we finish the plan for for now. So we're starting now. Um, I think the rest of the time we can use it for hands-on. And we encourage you to go through the guides and continue using the materials we have shared with you to understand the benefits of using Kodi working pros of capabilities that we'll, we're working on. And also, where are the limits in some situations because it's about a static code analysis that can really be very, very helpful, but always will, in general, may require intervention from the user in, in many situations. So please continue working with the labs. 
You have one example we have not demonstrated, that is the 80 max example. So the intention is not to present the guide, not to make the demo today. So if someone is curious about it or someone makes progress to give the 80 max example a try, we are very happy to show the details and see what are the main challenges of this.